In this video, I'll show you how I paint Eastling cataphracts. Hello everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. This time we're going to be looking at how to paint an Eastling cataphract from the Middle Earth SBG range. So, what I've done so far is I've prepared the model as a series of sub-assemblies, and I've primed them for painting. If you'd like some more detail in terms of the processes that I take for preparation of my models, then please click this link above and it will give you more detail in terms of filling gaps, preparing models and some considerations for sub-assemblies, so it's definitely worth a watch. So let's get right into painting and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to base coat the horse with some Abaddon Black. To enable the paint to flow smoothly from the brush, I've just thinned that down with a touch of water and to create a solid base coat, I applied this as two thin coats. Next, we'll paint in all of the hooves on the horse and for that, we're gonna use some Dawnstone. As before, I've just thinned the paint with a touch of water to help it flow smoothly onto the model and I'm taking care to keep a clean line between the black that we've already painted. Next, we're gonna base coat the horse's saddle cloth, the trim to the armor, and the tassel. Also, because we'll be using the same color, we're gonna base coat in the robes on the rider. And for that, we're going to use deep red from scale 75. As before, thin the paint with a touch of water and apply several coats to build to a solid finish. The next step is base coating the rider's boots and for that I used Scale 75's Eclipse Grey. I also decided at this stage to break up the red a bit on the rider by painting some Eclipse Grey on the sleeves. Now we're going to paint in the face of the rider with some Cadian flesh tone. Once that was dry, I applied a wash to the face of Reichland flesh shade. Next, base coat the gold armor of the horse, not forgetting the saddle cloth uh, tassel, and likewise the gold armor of the rider, and for that we're gonna use old gold from Vallejo. Now we're going to paint in all of the leather details. On the horse, this is the reins, the saddle, and don't forget the strap that goes underneath the belly of the horse. And on the rider, that's all of the belts and straps that hold the armor. And for that, we're going to use Gorthor Brown. Next, we're going to paint in the silver details. So on the horse, that's the bridle and also the horseshoes of any of the feet that are lifted. And on the rider, that's his sword. And some small buckles I found on the stirrups. And we're going to paint those in with some iron breaker. We 
With the basing done, we're going to start adding some definition to the horse now, and for that we're going to use some Eschen Grey. For this step, keep your paint nice and thin, and paint in all of the raised areas on the horse to give the muscle definition. Don't worry that it looks very stark at this point, we'll be blending this in at a later stage. With those muscles now painted in, we're just going to add some highlights to them, and we're also going to do a dry brush of the tail, and for this we're going to use some Dawnstone. As before, don't worry that this looks very stark at this point because we will be softening it down in the next step. And now to bring all that together and soften down those transitions, we're going to apply a wash all over with some null oil. Once that wash is fully dry, we can move on to shading the armor and the leather on the horse and the rider. And for that, we're going to use some Agrax Earthshade. Take your time and try and apply the wash only to the gold and leather areas. If you do manage to get some on the red, then just touch that back up again with some deep red. Next, we're going to shade in all of the red areas on the horse and on the rider, we're going to shade in all of the red robes and also the black boots and any black that you added to the robes. And for this, we're going to use some Null Oil. Once that wash is dry, you'll find that the armor is now very much dulled down. So we're going to now lift that back up again by doing a layer onto the gold armor with some Liberator Gold. For this step, you'll want to paint the Liberator Gold onto all of the armor, but make sure that you leave the darker shaded areas in the recesses. Next, we're going to brighten back up all the red areas on the horse and on the rider's robes. And for this, we're going to use some deep red from scale 75. Just as before, we're looking to paint all of the raised areas and leave the dark shaded color in all of the deep recesses.
Next, we're gonna brighten back up the boots on the rider and any black areas that we did on the robes. And for this, we're gonna use Eclipse Gray. As before with the gold and the red, we're just looking to pick out the raised areas and leave the darker shaded recesses. Now we're just going to apply a highlight to some of the features of the rider's face with some kids left flesh. As this was only a tabletop level, I just painted in the highlight on the bridge of the nose and the chin. If you wanted to go to a higher level, now would be a good time to paint in the eyes. Next, we're going to apply an edge highlight to all of the gold armor on the horse and rider and also any of the silver details such as the sword. And for this, we're going to use Iron Breaker. This is one of the more time consuming steps, but it is worth taking your time just to pick out all of the top edges of the armor and the scales. Now the next step is to edge highlight all of the leather, so that's the saddle and reins on the horse and also all the straps on the rider and for this we're going to use some Bane Blade Brown. An extra detail you can choose to add at this stage would be to add some scratches to the leather with some Bane Blade Brown. As a final touch to all the leather areas, we're going to add some warmth now by applying a glaze of Seraphim Sepia. For this step, all we're looking to do is add a nice tint, so you just want to wet the surface with the Seraphim Sepia. Just to add a bit of individuality to this horse, I thought it'd be fun to add a sock. So that's uh, a white area at the bottom of the leg. And for that, we're gonna start with some Celestra Grey. The key thing on this step is that you want to apply the paint always in a downward motion, and you're looking to make it quite jagged and rough. Next, we're going to repeat the process, but with a lighter color of Althorn Grey. The key thing this time is to leave some of the darker grey underneath showing through to simulate the hair. So horses that have white socks also have paler hooves. So we're going to paint the hoof in with some Flayed One Flesh. Next, we're going to shade that lighter hoof with some Agrax Earthshade. Now we're going to add an edge highlight to all of the red and the robes. And for this, we're going to use Blood Red from Scale 75. Moving on to the final details now and painting the inside of the shield and we're going to do that with some Rhinox Hide. Hydra. 
I then also decided to add some wood grain effect by painting some downward stripes of Mornfang Brown. The good thing with this is they don't need to be neat, so just add some wiggly vertical lines. And then repeat the step, but this time with some Gawthor Brown. And then to finish that off, just apply a thin glaze of Seraphim Sepia. For the panels on the front of the shield, I applied a base coat of Rhinox Hide. And then I added thin horizontal lines to each of those panels with some Mornfang Brown. With all of my sub-assemblies now painted, it was a case of putting those together to build the final model. The red cloak was painted in exactly the same way as I painted the robes of the rider, and the gold trim was painted following the same steps as the gold armour. All that remains to be done now is to base our cataphract, and if you'd like to see details on how I base this one, then please click this link above. Otherwise, our model is now complete. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found the information useful. If you have, then please do drop a comment below. If you'd like to follow my work in progress pictures and get a sneak peek of what videos are coming next, then you can follow me on my Instagram and Facebook pages. But in the meantime, if you'd like to see more of these videos, then please like this video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and don't forget to share. Thank you.